The theme song from Toy Story keeps playing in my head over and over and over. You've got a friend in me. Hey. You've got a friend in me. Um, if you don't know that song, go Google it, guys. When you finish listening to Zabaka, go to your search bar, find the Toy Story theme song, and listen to it. And you'll understand what I mean when I say I can't get it out of my head. Today's episode, we are going to talk about... I am going to talk about... <laughs> I'm going to talk about friendship. I, I thought it was essential that I do this as the next episode as this episode because of recent things that have happened in the international realm um with a performer those of you may not know who he is his name was nipsey hustle and he was a performing artist he's an entrepreneur and somebody who was in his immediate circle or like two degrees of separation killed him outside of his store in Crenshaw in Los Angeles, USA. And it's extremely sad and it's it really stirred some things up for me because in the last I don't know what year we in in the last five years I have had to restructure some shit i've had to snip some people i've had to eliminate bad vibes eliminate toxicity and a lot of that stuff stemmed from friendships and we will put friendships in quotation marks because i feel the way i regard friendship isn't the way that friendship is regarded by other people. Other people may not feel as strongly as I do about friendships. A lot of people might take friendships as seriously as I do. I consider my friends to be family. The people that I have in my immediate circle are my family. I really, I can't use another word (laughs) I can't use another word to describe them. And a lot of people throw the word friend around a lot. This is my friend. I'm a friend. All of these friends. And the truest meaning and definition of friend to me, sometimes people don't live up to what that word is and what it means and the weight that it carries. And so... I very seldom call people who I just work with or uh, uh, people who are around my friends. I have very few friends. I have people I associate with. I have colleagues and I have acquaintances. I'm acquainted with you. So I know who you are, but I don't really know you like that. So I know you, but I don't know you. I know, yes, we are wrong, (laughs) but we don't speak, we don't know each other on any level. I will have respect for you because, you know, human to human and, and it's, hey, good day, good night, good morning. But to say that we's homies, we's not homies, we's not brethren, we's not family, we's not friends. And I say all these words and there's so much music that comes to my head. And I I really do feel like music is my... (laughs) I have a constant playlist in my head, guys. So it's a Toy Story um, Story theme song. And then you have Tiana Taylor, Rose in Harlem. Chorus from that song and off of her mixtape is like legit. Like, oh, I play a song almost every day. So go listen to that. And then there is my darling from X Factor who has grown up and is so beautiful, Aaron Ray. His song, We and Homies. Listen to me. Go listen to those songs. Like, listen to that music. Um, and you, you, I feel like you'll understand when I say certain people cannot call me their friend because 
you don't have my back the way I have your back. And people throw the word friend around a lot. And as I'm getting older, <laughs> as I'm getting older, I realize that I have had to adjust and switch and really and truly understand friendships and understand not just this person is my friend, but understanding genuine friendships. And so I have a friendship tear. I have five tears of friendship um, or five levels of friendship. And I have had to understand that I might have somebody on my third tier, on my third level of friendship, and they have me on their fifth level of friendship. So it, it's, it's in growing and evolving, you understand that you really, you might consider someone more than they consider you, and understanding that is super, super, super paramount. Um, and it also is, is almost like, you, we good, we, you're still on the levels, you're not outside of the level of friendship, but we're not as tight or as close as we once were, or we were never really a level one friendship, we were always like a level two, and things happen, life happens, things change, we evolve as people and our relationships are supposed to evolve and sometimes you outgrow relationships and you outgrow friendships and understanding that was really paramount for me and I, I just I had to dissect the people that were in my circle of influence people that are currently in my circle of influence so my level one people are the people that and there are only two people on level one are the people that I feel the most comfortable to be my true is self. I can be free. I can be open. I can be completely honest without fear of judgment. I can be vulnerable. And for me, it is so hard to do that because sometimes you do it and then it's like, is this a safe space? I don't know. I'm not sure. Oh my goodness. Ah! Um, so, so those two people are my rocks and my pillars and to be very honest, I know that I am their level one. I know I'm a level one friend with them too. Um, and it's really tight knit. It's just like, this is my, my, this is my person. For those of you who look at Grey's Anatomy, you know what I mean. <laughs> this is my person. And they are my, my sisters. They are my support. They will tell me honestly yo like this is amazing or this is shit you need to do this over they crit critique me and my work with love and with understanding of, of who i am and where i want to be and that is what your level one friend is supposed to be it is that person who will pull you up when you are not your best self when you are fighting when you are and when i say fighting i mean like within the structure of of your life when you are trying to keep your brain together keep your mental health in order support you emotionally support you with that love and that care and though you may not be in the same space could send a message and be like yo thinking about you hope you're having a beautiful day um I know you may be having a rough time, but I just want to let you know that if you need to talk, I'm here. And if you don't need to talk, it's fine, but I'm here anyway. That is a level one friend. The person that you can completely let your guard down with. Tier number two, level number two. It's kind of like level one, but there's some things that you're just at that level. You wouldn't share with that person as much because for some for, for me for my level two it's i respect the friends that i have on my level two so much that i know and understand that they may not be capable to support me the way that my level ones will and i have what three or four people on my level two 
Um, and well, uh, yeah, <laughs> my numbers. Listen, guys, my levels have changed so much, and I, I have, I have really like <laughs> minimized my friends list so much in the last three years that I sometimes I'm like, wait, like, all right, I literally talk to the same six or seven people all the time. Um, <laughs> and it could be a little sad, but it's, you might think, but it actually works best for me because I have eliminated so much crap from my life and my energy and my space by doing things like this. So I have my level twos, I have my level threes, my level fours, and my level fives. My level fives are, and I'll do that one because it's the most extreme. Um, these are people that I love and I consider them and they are my friends. And if they need me, I will be there. I will get to where they are. I will support them when need be. I will be on the phone with them for limited times, of course, because I'm really not a phone person anymore. Um as in phone call person anymore and i love them and i appreciate them and i don't see them all the time i mean i don't really see my level ones all the time either <laughs> i'm a recluse and i love it um so my level fives um i wouldn't call them when i'm having a rough time i would probably call my level ones or my people who are in my circle of influence who are in my 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 very tight knit group of friends um but they're not the first call they're not the first call it might be the fourth call or even the fifth call and that's all right that's okay um and what what i really do have to remember is that i might have a friend in my level five who considers me a level two or even a level one friend and recognizing that and in recognizing that it's like yo like i probably wouldn't call you if i'm having a tough time but if you call me and i'm on your level one list i will jump out i will i will come i will support i will send a note i will say hey hope you're having a beautiful day and you know just keep your head up and being able to understand the dynamics of the friendship pyramid that's what we'll call it guys we're gonna call it a friendship pyramid yes you all can have it um and understanding the dynamics of it is super paramount because you're not gonna step on any toes and you're not gonna make anybody feel less than they are and with age comes true honest wisdom guys it does and it's beautiful so you have to know your level ones and you have to know your level fours and fives and and you have to know if you can at all let these different levels interact that is a big thing can all your friend circles hang out should all your friend circles hang out oh no i don't think so I don't think all my friends could handle being around each other. And it's not because people, um, they're not nice people or whatever. Everybody who's around me, uh, they're good people. But you have to know your friends' personalities. You have to know who they are. <laughs> and they're like, yeah, this cannot mesh with this. And res I respectfully know, I say, I'm inviting so-and-so. Is that fine with you? You know, could you rock with that? Open, honest communication within friendships is super, super, super important. I have had <laughs> many experiences with good friendships and not so good friendships. Um, just like everybody else, you've had a bad experience with someone who was a friend and in the commas and showed and proved themselves not to be a friend someone who proved not to have your back someone who took advantage of you calling them a friend i have a couple of those i do i do have a couple of those 
But I also have a couple where I wasn't the best friend. Um, and recently, I actually, I apologized to one of my friends and I said, you know, we were teenagers and we had an experience and I was in a, like, I was really, really mad. I was really upset at the moment. In that moment, I was really, I was miffed. I was real miffed. And I wanted to punch somebody in her face. Anyway, um, and I didn't. I didn't resort to violence, guys. Please don't. Um, <laughs> and... I looked at my friend and I, I looked at her and, and I said, in my, all of my upset and my rage and, and I looked at her and I said, I told you this would happen. I told you so. And in retrospect, I was like, oh my goodness, how could I tell my friend that? Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I felt so sick and I had to apologize to her the other day and I did. I was like, yo, like... I'm so sorry that I told you that because it was real out of time. And to say that in that moment when you were extremely vulnerable and you were, you, you were processing the situation at the same time I was processing the situation and you had to process it differently because you were more invested in it. And I was being a real jackass. Like, that was a real jackass thing to say. Like, yeah, t I told you this would happen. I told you so. Like, yo... This is supposed to be your friend, <laughs> you know? And it's not what I said, it's how I said it. I said it with this all-knowing authority and yeah, you should have known better. So yeah, 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 yeah. But um, she accepted my apology. Um, and then there are a couple more instances that I could think of like immediately when I wasn't the best friend or the best sister that I could have been, and I should have been, you know? And now I feel that I am a bit more communicative and I can calmly say, hey, I'm sorry, I apologize for being a complete and utter douchebag. And I just need to say that. I just need to get that out there. I just need you to know that that's what's up yeah and i think in recognizing that i am becoming a better friend i do i do believe that my friends will let me know if i am <laughs> and um what i also do know and this is actually a recent um recent discovery i cannot work with some of my friends I would love to hire some of them, but I prefer that we remain friends and not business associates or colleagues uh, because I, 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 would ch I choose the friendship over the work relationship. I do. I'll get somebody else who's capable and, <laughs> and maybe I'll make a friend at work, but that's not the objective. The objective is the work itself. Um, but sometimes you just can't hire your friends. You just can't. You, you need to draw the line. Draw the line. And speaking of drawing the line, I guess, you know, you guys could tell me in the comments below, like, wh how do you draw the line with your friends? Like, is there a boundary that your friends can't cross? And if they cross it, what are the repercussions? How do, you know, how, like... How do you respond to that, to your friend crossing the line? What is that thing? Um, for me, crossing the line with me is saying that you are my friend, purporting to be my friend, and then not having my back like a friend would. For example, you talk smack behind my back. Eh, hey, hey. eh. We rhymed, guys. We rhymed. Rhymed is a word? Yeah, rhymed is a word. Rhymed? We, past tense of rhyme is to rhyme. Or is that a past participle? Anyway, this is not English. This is Zabuka. So, I was saying that you cross the boundary with me when you talk smack behind my back and then come back in my face and smile and laugh and talk 
like if you never said shit about me also doing that and then acting like you've never done that and then <laughs> moving like i've done you something and it's almost like but i didn't do <laughs> i didn't do you nothing <laughs> but i digress i digress times a million i i oh guys um I, I definitely needed to cleanse and i did that i i i did that which is a whole other conversation which is accountability is their accountability in friendships how do you hold your friends accountable for things that they may have said or that they may have done that hurt you do you pull your friend up can you if it's a level one friend and yet you know what I'm saying? But if it's a level five friend, I might not want to really get into it. But I feel like if the people who you have around you, if you can't have an honest conversation with them at all, then maybe they need to not be anywhere near the friend pyramid. Maybe they're just not, just no circle. You just, just like, you know get downgraded from friend to acquaintance or associate or colleague um because they they must you must be able to say to your friend yo like you know that thing that you said that time it it wasn't cool um and it really wasn't it wasn't i didn't like it i didn't like it can we communicate with our with our friends and hold them accountable for things that they've said or done to you, but also things that they've done to other people. If you have seen and witnessed somebody who's close to you hurt somebody else, like, do you pull them up? Do you say, yo, like, nah, dog, like, you can't, I can't rock with that. I can't, can't associate myself with that kind of thing. Because if you could do that to, to this person, you could definitely do it to me. Um, do we hold our friends accountable? Um, early last year, I, I was held accountable for some BS that I did. Um, and I definitely did a lot of introspection after uh, a very intense conversation um, about the type of friend I was being at the time. Um, and I really did some heavy introspection. And I was like, yeah, there were some times when I, I was a shitty friend. Um, and I had to, 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 you know, do a lot of of work on me, on self, and just be like, yeah, just like, I remember this incident, I remember this incident, I remember those, those few incidents <laughs> that you, that you tell me about, and, um, like, yeah, I, I thought about it, and I, I accept that you felt the way that you felt, um, and I, I didn't re respond the way you may have expected me to respond in this situation, um, and part of it may have been that I did not see, I did not recognize, I may not have understood at the time. And so now that you've brought it to my attention, I'm super aware now that what I did was really crappy. Um, and I'm gen I have to genuinely apologize for not paying enough attention and being self-absorbed. Um, and so that I, I literally didn't see that you were having an issue or a problem with the way I was being a friend. Um, and to be real honest, like I thought I was like real good friend. And that friendship in itself had to happen and end the way it was supposed to. We were supposed to be friends for the period of time we were friends for. We were supposed to become friends when we did become friends um, because that friendship, I think, I believe, um, saved the both of us from extremely awful people. She had an awful person in her life that she was dealing with and I had one as well. And we were both in these toxic um, situations and we met each other and we weren't friends instantly because we, of course, we had to 
suss each other out and see where the other person was at. And so we became friends and our friendship became, for me at least, um, and in observing and in, in t- looking back, you know, hindsight, is 2020. Can I realize our friendship was a sanctuary for both of us from our toxic environments. And so we were good for each other and we were, our friendship was necessary for us to look at what the other person was experiencing and being like, yo, like, no, like, I need to pull you from this. <laughs> you need to pull me from this. And so I think we both had the same, um, we, were in, we were in the same headspace in terms of, yeah, like our friendship is going to work to help both of us. And so those two situations came to an end on both of both of, both of our sides. Um, they took as much time as they had to. Um, and then there was kind of like a lull in between. Um, right. And yeah, it was just, there was this like space when like we didn't communicate with each other. And then we reconnected and stuff had happened in our lives and we'd met other people and we just, we, but we reconnected and there was, there was almost like there was this, this unspoken cloud, you know, that we didn't talk about X, Y, Z. We didn't, we didn't discuss the love um, until last year. And um, I, then I understood, okay, this is what happened. Okay, all right, putting the pieces together. Okay, all right, great. Um, and then in attempting to, I don't want to say recreate what we had before the love, but sort of like build on the missing space and time. And, and um, eventually we ended up separating ways again. And I think during the love in the past, like it, it, it felt like, okay, like, okay, we, we, we have to like be in each other's space again. Um, and if we, if we talk, I'll be real good. And now I don't feel like that's where we at. I feel like now we, we've settled into ourselves and we know who we are. We know what we want. And the friendship evolved, and I think we we got to a point where we both outgrew each other. And so now, like, I mean, if I if I see her, I would say hi. I would you know wave, and I would you know, and there's no malice, and there's no ill will, and I do genuinely wish her the absolute best, and I just I want her to be so friggin happy because she does like she friggin deserves it um but i don't i don't think that there's room or opportunity to tack back you know because there isn't that this is one of those friendships where it's like I, you know you, you want to see somebody shine and excel and it's fine and it's okay if you're not an active player in that glow and that shine and you know i guess that's and that in itself is beautiful it's about understanding the 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 evolution of of the friendship and sometimes you evolve and become better friends and sometimes you evolve and you look at your friend shine from far and you just send them good vibes and positive energy and you just yeah (laughs) you just i really just you know and and so yeah i was talking about accountability that's what i was talking about get me all emotional i was i was upset and crying on the first episode i'm gonna be crying on the second episode too oh god um (laughs) but yes so what I want to get into now is how friendships change when people get into romantic 
relationships. Sips tea, guys. We got to sip the tea. Sip the tea because I know you know somebody who got into a relationship and switched. They just switched, guys. Y'all know somebody. I know right this second, you somebody came into your mind. Instantly. You're thinking about that person right now. It's almost like, you know, you get with somebody and you forget all about your friends. And perhaps that's why I'm single. Because <laughs> I don't switch at all. My logic behind it is this. You met me with my friends, and if me and you done, you're gonna leave me with my friends. <laughs> so, call me a cynic. I have no problem. But if this don't work out, if me and you ain't happening in four months, two weeks, and three days, sweetie pie, I, my friends and I, we rocking. We are rocking. I rock it with my brethren and them. <laughs> Feel me? So, in my wild and wretched past, that wasn't very wild or wretched, <laughs> I have kept my friends extremely close to the people that I've dated or been in relationships with or seen. Um, because of that, you know, just knowing that if this doesn't last, I don't want to feel like I've left my friends behind and that I've totally disregarded them or put them on the wayside or put them on pause while I'm in a quote unquote thing with a guy. And I genuinely believe that when I'm in a relationship, I should not be putting all my eggs in one basket, meaning I can't get everything I want from my partner. It's, you can't get everything from one person. It's unrealistic. And so you have your partner, yes. Uh, and, and we will go into this in future episodes. You have your partner, yes. But you have to have your friends. You have to have hobbies. Please have hobbies. Please have something outside of your relationship that you can do with your friends that, you know, keeps that camaraderie that that, that person will have your back and that those people are not going to dictate the pace of your relationship, your romantic relationship, but rather support and buffer um, should things go bad, should things go well, everything. So they, you legit have a core group of supporters, supporters who have your back, who, and I will be very honest, I have friends and have had family and just be like, I am not a big fan of your partner. I don't like your man or I don't like your girl. Um, but if you are happy and this person is not abusing you, in any way, form, or fashion, I'm happy for you. And I, once you're happy, we good. We are right. They are people who get into relationships and completely dedicate 100% time, energy, and self into their romantic relationship. And they don't do anything with their friends anymore. They forget about friend. They don't have a friend. We gotta get a man or they get a girl. And boy, we see you so long. Look how long I see you. Yeah, boy. Well, you know, I'm home there with the wife. You day. Okay, cool. And two of y'all gonna stifle each other. But that's <laughs> that's probably my extremely cynical view of things. Um, but I I do believe that if you are in a romantic relationship, eliminating platonic friendships is probably the worst thing you could do. Like, you need to have solid friends who got, got your back. And I'm not saying people have to be all up in your business um, and, and knowing everything that you discuss with your partner because there's a whole other conversation. Which I guess you guys could discuss when you're talking about boundaries of friendship. When you're in a relationship 
with somebody what are the boundaries that you have with your friends that you know from so long from long time what are the boundaries that you have set for your for your friendships when you're in a romantic relationship so you can talk about that down below in the comment section yeah or, or when you you share the video because you know you'll probably share it right wink wink <laughs> and as we are on a topic of romantic relationships do people get into romantic relationships with friends with people who they consider friends do people marry for friendship and love or again married for the wedding day and the, you know half baked photographs in the botanic gardens i don't know um can friendships lead to romantic relationships i don't know i ain't never had one of those so <laughs> Also, maybe that's why I'm single. <laughs> I didn't like none of my friend and them. Um, I didn't have, I didn't make no friend, so I wasn't friending anyway. <laughs> I really love in this episode. It's clearly the funniest topic ever. Friendship is something that I take super seriously and. I have been burnt in the past, but I also have been blessed. I've been so fortunate to have amazing women around me and amazing men as well who have time and time again been amazing, beautiful people and therefore they've been great friends to me. They have become part of my family and I am so grateful for every single person who's who's in my pyramid nah i sound like a selling arm way um, <laughs> in my pyramid like a little rat um <laughs> we're scheming we're scheming in the streets no we're not we have beautiful circles and we appreciate i, re I really genuinely appreciate them you know the people that i have around me have been super supportive on many different levels and none of the people who are around me have ever put me in a position of questioning who I am, um, questioning our friendship and that's something that I think we all need to do. I think we need to sit and we need to have conversations with ourselves and maybe pull out a notebook and journal and ask ourselves these questions like who is this person and how do I consider this person and, and where do they f fit in in my life and do they help me grow and do they um, want me to be the best version of myself and are they adding to that or are they taking away from that? Because I will tell you this, honestly, I had to do some major snipping and it was uncomfortable and it was, it was, it was, it could have been messy, guys. It just been extremely honest with you all. It could have been really, really, really messy. And I decided to hush, which is a task in itself because I love to talk. Um, I had to hush, I had to open my eyes, and I had to move away. And at the time, it felt like. I was ripping a band-aid off a scab. It was painful. I cried. I mean, I because it was mixed with so many things when I started to observe. And I, I had no choice but to remove myself after the observations I made because it wasn't a healthy environment. I wasn't growing, I wasn't becoming the woman I am at this point in time. I was stagnant and I was enjoying it. All yeah, I was enjoying it. I was reveling in the stagnation. Yes. I, it, I, and it, looking back, I'm like, dude. You were so stupid to be sitting down in this friendship 
and in, and and encouraging it and condoning it and giving it fire and being like yeah that's my real homie that's my real doggy fresh i will defend that person to the end degree defend and be like yeah champion in your cause and then you step back from out of it and like everything else when you're not in it when you're not near to it when you're far away and you're observing what's going on you see things in a completely different light you see things and people for what they truly are and you get to just oh you get to dislike the ways oh yes mm, 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 mm. you get to understand that what you are part of is really not the best thing to be a part of and you really needed to get up pack your chargy bundle and boss it so think if you have to question whether or not somebody is your friend and if somebody has your back then you need you need to do some writing you need to sit down and drink some tea calm your soul and really journal and really find out like yo like what going on take a friendly sabbatical or something you know what i'm saying and it it, it sometimes it shows up in the most in the most unbelievable places and instances and and they say something or they do something and then they're like it's almost like you do a double take you gotta check yourself like wait what we like you just said that or you just did that um and it's shock you it will be shocking and it takes it takes time to heal it does it takes time to recover you know breakups with significant others are hard i think breakups with friends are even harder you know and and because these are the you're the friend of somebody who's supposed to know such intimate things about you that if they betray that trust it's so hard to come back from that it is so 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 hard so i hope you guys could evaluate your friendships at this point like really see if people is really your friend if they're using that word and they're not being that word oh because child you know i mean i could give you guys a story i should give you guys a story yeah yeah i'm i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do this i wasn't going to but but i think i will i think i will so i had a friend and this friend was my friend this friend was like legit as my homie you know we out together we liming we partying we chilling we out here and then the friendship shifted and i'll tell you why boys boys the friendship changed because of boys <laughs> and it should not have i didn't feel like it should have but i think that those boys needed to come into our lives at the time they came into our lives because they shook shit up it got shook up so much and it changed my perspective of the friendship so much. I will tell you that even a year plus after the dissolution of the friendship, I, I, I was told by an acquaintance that while I was friends with this person, they were saying some things that weren't too it wasn't too awkward you understand things were not you you know you just 
as I was saying earlier, you talk smack about me and then you come in my face and you smile like if you ain't said nothing and I pull myself away and you acting like you clueless, like you don't know you was talking smack. And that isn't even what pissed me off. What pissed me off was at the time, because I've, listened to me, therapy has been good to me, guys. It has been. What upset me and pissed me off at the time, I was real miffed, was the fact that another mutual friend was made to feel like she was the reason I decided not to be around. That really upset me. That really upset me at the time. I was just like, yo, you serious right now? And it's the whole day in headlights, doe-eyed, bambi kind of vibes. Like, I don't know what happened. I don't know what went wrong. I'm uncertain. I have no clue. Well, here's what, sweetie. You, you keep being clueless. <laughs> Because if, if I have to tell you where you went wrong, some, you need to check yourself. Like, for real, for real. And walking away was the best damn decision I ever make, y'all. It was the best decision ever. I don't regret it one minute, one second, ever. And let me tell you something. When you release certain people and certain things like jobs and institutions and labels honey you're free as a bird and the blessings will come your fortune is right around the corner trust and believe me i have seen it i have experienced it i have witnessed it Ooh. and it's beautiful i really do think that when I started to look at everything that was around me at that point in time and just seeing the masks come off and I was like oh my gosh look at this look at the revelations <laughs> and then made the choice to to bust it ah I was all the better. I really, really, really was. And I, I live my life so floaty. Yeah. Like a cloud. Hashtag cloud business. So, evaluate your friendships. See what's up in your life. Who is on your level one? Who is on your level four? Organize your, your friendship circles organize your tears and know know who's who and what's what and and who have your back and who who doesn't and who you need to you know shift from being a level one to being a level three you know and things as i said things change people change situation change the only constant in life is change so Get with it. The next time I discuss friendships, I want to talk about this reoccurring question. Can men and women be friends? Hmm, that's an interesting one and it keeps popping up. So sound off about it in the comment section below. This has been Zabaka, episode two. Thank you guys so much for listening.